going out, not staying in, just hanging around with my head in a spin. But there is no need to scream and shout. We're not going out. We are not going out. time do you call this? 3.50 a.m., exactly as scheduled. The taxi will arrive at 3.55 a.m., and we depart at precisely 4 a.m. Did you not read my itinerary? I'll wait for the film. <laughs> nice to see you, Frank. And you, Wendy. If anyone's going to arouse me in the middle of the night, I want it to be you. <laughs> Come in. Perhaps we'll give you a minute to get dressed. In private. Please yourself. I'm going to be running behind schedule, Lucy. Relax, we've got loads of time. It's a 90-minute taxi ride to the airport. One hour to get through security and check-in, and once one factors in a potential quarantine period for Frank, <laughs> I'd say we're pushing it. Kids, wake up! Get dressed right now before Grandpa Grumpy Bollocks reads us the riot act! <laughs> oh, you're here. <laughs> morning. And morning to you, Grandpa Grumpy Bollocks. <laughs> The taxi for the airport will arrive in exactly four minutes. You know what I'd do, Geoffrey? No. Even after all these years, I've still got nothing. <laughs> well, when I'm making travel plans, I will factor in a contingency. Maybe you should have done that. I did. I allowed an extra two minutes in case we have to dump you at the side of the road. <laughs> That's right, we need to get going. What are you doing? Opening the curtains. But you can't leave them open for four days. Sends a message to burglars. You can't leave them closed for four days. That's what sends a message to burglars. <laughs> Whatever the message, you seem to be sending it by semaphore. <laughs> All right. What about sort of half and half, like that? You mean the configuration that no one ever uses unless they're going away? Oh, yeah. Because it'll be the curtains to blame for a burglary, won't it? Mrs. Four Days in France Can't Wait, hashtag holidays. <laughs> Oh, I do hope Raffles hasn't read my Instagram account. He might steal my priceless drawer full of old tights. I'd hardly call a trip to Normandy a holiday, Lee. We're going to pay our respects at the place where Wendy's uncle George fell. A man who literally fought them on the beaches, fought them on the landing grounds, fought them in the fields and fought them in the streets. A bit of a drinker, was he? <laughs> I want everyone behaving with respect at these memorials. What are you looking at me for? No one wants a repeat of the penalty shootout at Stonehenge. <laughs> our family know how to behave. We've lost people in our family as well. Yes, but if we commemorated all the places where your relatives fell, there'd be a plaque outside every Weatherspoons in Lancashire. <laughs> I'm sure everyone will be very respectful. Good, because we're going to honour some very brave men. If I'd been born at a different time, I'd like to think I could have played my part in the Second World War. I'm sure you did your best the first time round. <laughs> and it's not just her Uncle George. Did you know that Wendy's father, Jack, escaped from Colditz? Molly told me all about it last night. She's been very interested in the war since I told her about Grandad Jack and Uncle George. She had Frank playing Escape from Colditz until midnight. I'm not sure I agree with board games that trivialise the war. You'd like it, Wendy. It's all about how to escape imprisonment from a fascist. <laughs> I bet your father's got some tales to tell, Wendy. His generation didn't really like to talk about the war. He told me one or two. Where well, the Gestapo failed, Jeffrey succeeded. <laughs> well, we haven't got time for them now. We need to go. Kids! Hurry up! We're coming! Hang on. Have you checked the fridge? Oh, I did it last night. There's a whole bottle of milk in here. What if it goes off? Just chuck it away. It's a two-litre one. Not throwing away perfectly good milk. Well, we can't take it to Normandy. Why not? I don't know, Lee. There was something about buying a wreath that felt more appropriate. <laughs> <laughs> Just 
Lee know you can actually freeze milk? Don't tell him that. I want to see if he can do it. <laughs> <sighs> Anyone? We need to go. Kids! OK! Has everyone got their passports? Oh. I've got L5. Hang on. What's mine? It was in here. Oh, for God's sake, you're going to need it. I have been away before, you know. Yes, but you don't need a passport when it's at Her Majesty's pleasure. <laughs> Please hurry up and find it. Yes, or we'll need to sneak you on in a suitcase. Don't be silly, we could get him on his hand luggage. <laughs> Hang on, you can't leave without me. Help him find it. Oh, are you coming through customs with us? Or are you planning on jumping out over Belgium? <laughs> they were learning about the Second World War at school and they got to borrow some costumes. They were looking up military records and all sorts. Are we having breakfast? Yeah, milk. <laughs> Think of it as rationing. <laughs> there isn't time for breakfast. We'll get something at the airport, darling. Polish your medals. I think McDonald's do a military discount. <laughs> Where's that bloody passport gone? I can't miss out on paying my respects, especially to those sailors in those little boats that brought our brave boys back home, lest we forget. That was Dunkirk, Grandad. Oh, did you forget? <laughs> D-Day was the landing beaches. There was Utah, Omaha... No, sweetheart. That's in America. What are they teaching the kids in schools these days? Money's correct. Utah and Omaha were code names for the beaches in Normandy. So which one was King's Landing? That was Game of Thrones. <laughs> we need to get going. Go and tell your brothers to hurry up. Where the hell is it? You like war films, Frank? I know this is a trap, but yes. Yeah, there's always that great bit where the hero gets injured and tells the rest of his soldiers to go on without him. I'm not injured. Easily rectified. <laughs> It was in the side pocket, zipped up. Oh, yes. I must be losing my marbles. I put sugar in the fridge last week. Sugar's his cat. <laughs> Don't worry, it's in date. Yes, I wasn't checking the date. I was checking to see whether the stool swivel round high enough to lift your head into frame. <laughs> when you're finished, we've got a whole can of squirty cream to get through. <laughs> Let's have a look at yours, then, shall we? Oh, a very handsome picture. Very sexy. I could swipe right for that. <laughs> oh, my mistake, Geoffrey. It's Wendy's passport. March 12th, 1945. A very good vintage, if I may say so. 1945? You mind, Frank, that's personal. He's right, Mum. The passport's got a mistake on it. You were born in 1947 and they've put 1945. Oh, I don't believe it. That's right. Oh, what a nuisance. Have you never noticed it before? It's a... Uh... A new passport. I've only recently renewed it. <gasps> they must have made a mistake at the passport office. Well, we can't turn up at Heathrow with a dodgy passport. We'll all be strip searched. You strip searched? That'll be double gloves. <laughs> we'll be fine. Wendy's travelled through customs on that passport hundreds of times. But she just said it was brand new. Oh, so she did. <laughs> yes, it's new. No, it isn't. The date of issue says it's six years old. Yes, that's right. No, I must have made a mistake. When I said that it was new, what I meant to say was that it... wasn't. Are you guys getting in my cab or not? The tax expires in April. They're coming right now. Kids! Mum! What's going on? It's really not a big deal. Well, then you might as well tell us. A lot of people, as we get a little older, aren't entirely honest about our age. You lied to the passport office? No, of course not. I'm sorry, but I'm a little confused. How old are you, exactly? So we cut her open and count the rings? <laughs> you may as well tell her. I'm two years older than you were always led to believe, Lucy. I don't believe this. Do you need a drink? <laughs> about your age? It was a long time ago, before I met your dad. The good old days, eh? The dawn before the dark. <laughs> I was approaching 30, unmarried. I was worried that people would call me an old spinster, so I decided to remain 28 for a couple of years longer than I was strictly entitled. 
And then she met me. And realised she'd be better off adding a couple of decades. <laughs> At the time, I told the same lie to your dad, but a short time later he happened to stumble across my birth certificate, so I told him the truth. But I've been dishonest with so many people, it sort of became easier to keep lying. Mum! Well, Lucy, it's not that bad. Exactly. It's an extra couple of years at your mum's age, it's dropping the ocean. <laughs> Drink your milk. <laughs> so that time I spent a fortune flying you to Rome for your 60th birthday? You were actually 62? <laughs> yes, but these things even out. Two years earlier, when I really was 60, you gave me a money-off voucher for Wagamamas. <laughs> Come on, we're gonna miss this flight. Yeah, hurry up, Lucy. 700 quid, those tickets. A small price compared to the one paid by Wendy's uncle. Yeah, at least he managed to make it over the channel. <laughs> OK, we'd better go. Ten minutes can make all the difference. So you can imagine how I'm feeling about two years. Kids, we're going! Coming! I'll quickly go to the bog and then we'll be off. Frank, we need to go. When you get to my age, you can't get yourself moving until you've got yourself moving, if you know what I mean. <laughs> Wendy's father had an easier job escaping from Colditz than we're having leaving this house. Great Granddad Jack didn't escape from Colditz. What? You'll have to use the toilets at the airport, Frank. We're late. Benji, Charlie, we're leaving right now. He was in Colditz, but he isn't on the list of people who escaped. It's on the internet. What are you talking about? The internet, Jeffrey. It's like C-Fax, only with mucky pictures. I looked up Great Grandad Jack's military records. You must have made a mistake, darling. No, there's no mistake, Wendy. It says here Jack was in Colitz till the end of the war, but there's no mention of him escaping. Oh, come on, Geoffrey. You never believe anything I show you on the internet. Well, this isn't a photograph of a dog with seven gonads, Wendy. <laughs> this is an official document. Hmm. What's going on? Go upstairs, Molly. Up, down, up, down. It's not easy being a soldier. <laughs> My father was a prisoner in Colditz. Yes, yes, we've established that. He was very successful in terms of getting captured. <laughs> I've got a question. If it's about the dog with seven gonads, no. <laughs> All right, forget it then. He didn't really escape, did he, Mum? No. I don't believe this. Your father, lording it over me all those years with tales of heroism, the bloody liar. Beg your pardon? At least he fought for his country. What have you ever done? Entered into a border dispute over some lay land I. <laughs> I'd have happily gone into combat with any European nation. Whatever the pretext. <laughs> This is the most outrageous betrayal I've ever experienced. I think you're overreacting a little bit, Geoffrey. Overreacting? Do you know what it's like to spend your whole life being made to feel inferior to your father-in-law? <laughs> no, imagine. Well, it doesn't make any difference to me whether he escaped or not. He's still a hero. Now, we need to go right now. Kids! Oh! It makes a difference. A huge difference. If Grandad Jack didn't escape, that means he didn't come home until the end of the war. September 1945. So? So, if you're now telling us you were born in March 1945, how can he be your father? I really need to go to the bog. Just go. <laughs> I don't want to miss any of this. I don't suppose you could continue this conversation outside the loo, could you? I think you owe everyone an explanation, Wendy. Why don't we discuss this over a nice cup of tea? Will you stop worrying about the bloody milk? <laughs> I don't want a cup of tea. I want to know why I've been deceived about your father for my entire marriage. So do I. When my father was captured, my mother was on her own for many years with no way of knowing whether her husband was alive or not. Can you imagine what that's like? Sometimes none of us know whether your husband's alive or not. <laughs> but then, of course, there started to be a lot of American soldiers stationed over here. Mum, are you going to tell me Nan had some kind of love affair with an American soldier? No, of course not. It was more of a one-night stand. Typical yank. Sounds like they did more than that. I don't know which is worse, the immorality or the fact that I unwittingly married an American. 
<laughs> half American, technically. Well, at least it explains why you drove anti-clockwise around the Hersham roundabout. <laughs> so, Grandad Jack wasn't my real granddad. Sorry to interrupt this middle-class version of Jeremy Kyle. I've got other fares waiting. We're coming now. No, we are not. Sorry, we're just having a little debate. Leave or remain. These things never take long, do they? <laughs> the war ended. Dad came home to find her with a child. Little baby Wendy. Were you named after the American burger bar? <laughs> but he chose to forgive her and raised me as his own. So when did you find out what really happened? As soon as I was old enough to talk to people, it was obvious. Because of your accent? Can you please stop talking? <laughs> I was brought up in a very small village. We were the local scandal. I hated people judging my family, so when I met your dad, I chose not to tell him. Hence the reason I pretended my father escaped from Colditz. Oh. Instead of you feeling humiliated, you allowed me to be humiliated by your lying father. He didn't humiliate you. Oh, is that so? I didn't escape from Colditz for my daughter to marry a man like you, Geoffrey. I didn't escape from Colditz for you to give her a cheap wedding. I didn't escape from Colditz for you to take her on a honeymoon to Bogner Regis. Well, he clearly kept trying to tell you he didn't escape from Colditz. So back in the 1970s, when you admitted you lied to me about your age, it wasn't because you were worried about being left on the shelf. Of course not. Those attitudes went out with the dinosaurs. Yeah, but you were going out with one. <laughs> so not only did you lie about your age, you lied about the reason for lying, which was to cover up another lie, which you then perpetuated by lying again. Is that what you're telling me? Well... Are you sure she understood the question? <laughs> So what happened to your biological father, the American? What do you think happened? June 1944 came. He was part of the D-Day landings in Normandy. The place we're all going to visit? Where Uncle George died? I never had an Uncle George. It's just what I refer to this American soldier as for my mother's dignity. His real name was Private George Powell, an American serviceman who died in action. Another lie. It wasn't Uncle George. It was Uncle Bloody Sam. <laughs> I don't believe this. We're going to miss this flight. Yeah, come on, Lucy. There are some things in life you can't change. History, certain life choices, non-refundable airline tickets. <laughs> Lee's right, Lucy. I know it must be a shock for you. I dread to think what that would do to my grandchildren if they found out I wasn't their real granddad. I can only imagine the devastation. <laughs> but what's done is done, and things were different during the war. Like Wendy said, people were lonely and frightened. They didn't know if their loved ones were ever coming home. Who are we now to sit in judgment? Biological, non-biological. It only matters if you're buying washing powder. <laughs> It's going so well. <laughs> you know, Lucy, I don't know much about history. Don't know much biology. Yeah. Don't do the whole song. There is a cap waiting. <laughs> but I'm willing to be educated. So how about we stop fighting? We get on this plane and we go and learn something about the sacrifice those men made. Geoffrey? I'm still struggling with the image of Frank buying washing powder. <laughs> But yes, let's go and pay our respects. Lucy? I thought you needed the loo. The moment's passed. <laughs> I mean, I've got the airport. <laughs> Come on, Lucy. Does it matter? Your granddad Jack was always there for you when you needed him. So we'll always be your granddad. Whatever. 832. The number of bricks on the front of your house. <laughs> Well? Can you take our cases to the car, please? The kids are just coming. I hope there's no turbulence on the plane, Lee. You'll be full of butter. <laughs> At the end of the day, Lucy, your parents aren't the only ones that had questions asked about them. My mother had it too. Hang on, what? I'll tell you later. Two more minutes. <laughs> questions? What sort of questions? 
Like I said, it happened a lot, women finding companionship while the men were away from home. Away from home? Your dad was a bus driver. Exactly. He was away from home ten hours a day. <laughs> well, was it, Frank? Another one-night stand? Oh, no, nothing that sordid. None taken. A full-on romantic liaison, apparently. Was he American, too? Oh, no, nothing like that. My mother would never have sold herself for a bar of fancy American chocolate and a pair of nylon stockings. So what did it in the end? Kit Kat and a pair of pop socks? <laughs> Who was he? Someone she met through her volunteer work. What volunteer work? Well, during that time, there was a lot of soldiers in hospitals recovering from war injuries, and sometimes they appreciated a visitor. A shoulder to cry on. And she didn't think a bunch of grapes was enough. <laughs> she always had a fondness for a man in uniform. Is that why she married a bus driver? <laughs> well, this patient just so happened to have a room on his own. And sometimes they would turn a blind eye and give my mum and this soldier some private time. Especially if they slipped a small bribe to the wardens. Wardens? What kind of hospital has wardens? I think he means a prison hospital, don't you, Frank? Are you telling me that you are the result of a bunk-up between my nan and some bloke in prison? My money was on a lab experiment that went wrong. <laughs> she just got swept up in the moment. Oh, well, it's easily done, isn't it? Long drive to the prison, buzzed in through the main gate, straight through security, then on through lots of locked doors, and then into another secure unit and into the secure hospital wing. Hmm? She didn't have time to think, did she? <laughs> so my real granddad was a convict. No, he wasn't a convict. In fact, some would say he was a war hero. Why would they lock a war hero up in prison? Was he a conscientious objector? Is that what you mean? No, in fact, the complete opposite. He very much fought for his country. Am I the only one not following this? I think so. <laughs> Come on, me. Do the maths. Sorry, math. <laughs> he was a prisoner during the war. Say it again. A prisoner during the war? Lee, I think... Don't he... help him. He's nearly got it. <laughs> he was a prisoner of war! Bingo! He was a bloody German! Now, don't overreact, son. That's right, Lee. Stay calm, humourless and efficient. It's what your grandfather would have wanted, yeah? <laughs> I don't believe this. Oh, really? A few minutes ago, you seemed to think it wasn't important. Now, at least yours was fighting on the right side. <laughs> and yet still he drinks dimage. <laughs> at least he won't get osteoporosis. <laughs> if it was up to me, Lee, I would have told you years ago. But the rest of the family insisted on keeping it quiet. I was only following orders. Oh, good God. <laughs> so why are you telling me now? I was trying to make Lucy feel better. What, by saying she's married into the Luftwaffe? How did you know he's in the Air Force? Well, how else would he have ended up in Chorley? He could hardly go goose-stepping through the Channel Tunnel, could he? <laughs> Calm down, Lee, you're being ridiculous. Yeah, all right, Mum. It can be quite a shock finding out that your family tree has just been uprooted. Are you all right, hon? I mean, darling. <laughs> Look, we need to get to the airport. We can't arrive late. That's rich. Coming from an American. <laughs> Half American? And if it wasn't for the Americans, you'd be speaking German by now. I'm well, surprised my dad isn't speaking German already. I'm not bloody German. Yeah, you're only saying that because you're lost. <laughs> it doesn't change who you are just because you might have a bit of German in you. Oh, yeah? Was that his chat up line to Nan? Now, don't talk about your Nan like that. Oh, can you all calm down and keep your voices down, please? Kids! What? This is the only costume they had left. He's definitely yours, Lee. <laughs> so, Nana, did your daddy lie to everyone? Were you listening? In answer to your question, Molly, he's not quite the man we thought he was. But he still fought in the war, which means he's still a hero. Well, if he wasn't Nana's real daddy, but he still loved her the same, then I think he was a good man. Don't you, Grandad? Yes, of course he was. And Nana, if your mummy hadn't have met the American soldier, would you still have been born? Well, I suppose not. Then you should be glad that it happened, not embarrassed. And if Nana hadn't been born, where would we all be? You three? Well, I guess maybe you three wouldn't be here at all. But I'm glad it happened. Yes, well, then I'm glad it happened too. Right, no more warnings. The last chopper is leaving Saigon. <laughs> Come on, let's go. Before we find out Jeffrey's grandfather was Stalin. Who ordered the minibus, by the way? Me. Local firm? Yeah. And I've had you down for an Uber. <laughs> Come on, let's go and pay our respects.
going out, I'm not staying in. Just hanging around with my head in a spin, but there is no need to scream and shout. We're not going. 